I'm backing up my truck, I'm gonna hook it up, loading up my boat with all my gear. I've been working hard all week, trying to make ends meet, spending time wishing I was fishing. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. Gather up your gear and come along. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. This is Terry Wickstrom. Join Karen Collum, Greg Collagio, and me as we take you to some of our favorite fishing spots from Colorado to Minnesota, the Arctic Circle to Central America and beyond. As we revisit episodes of Mountain States Fishing and Angling Adventures Television on the best of fishing with Terry Wickstrom. Hey, we're up here today. We're at North Michigan Reservoir again, only we're not going to fish the lake. You know, you saw us come up here before and we showed you the cabins and the campgrounds up here and the great fishing in North Michigan Reservoir. But the river, North Michigan River, that runs uh, both in and out of North Michigan Reservoir is just a tremendous, tremendous little fishery. It's full of brook trout. It's got some rainbows in it and every now and then a big brown. Now, we're not going to do a lot of technical fishing today. We're going to walk around in the meadows and through the trees, fish with a, a fly rod and a spinning rod. We'll switch off and try to catch just probably a bunch of little fish and just have a great time, hopefully see some wildlife and just enjoy being up here in the mountains. Got one. <laughs> oh, nice little fish on the fly and he's tangled me up in a tree. There he goes. Oh. <laughs> Looks like a rainbow. I didn't expect to catch a rainbow here. Oh, is it pretty? Wow. And it's a nice fish. Let me get a better hold of him here. Get the fly out of him. Get out in the water here. I want you to think of the skinny water we're in, folks. It's a pretty rainbow. Oh, there it goes. Oh, he's still here. I'll revive him. That's a pretty, pretty rainbow. I mean, just beautiful. That's a, that's a solid 10, 12 inch fish. Get him revived. We're fishing in water that's, I'm there he goes. I'm touching bottom right there. Narrow little stream. Started out with a spinning rod, but I wasn't having much luck, so I switched over to my fly rod, little tiny dry fly, just working it through these tiny pools here and bang, and he came out of nowhere. I mean, you'd never expect to fish that big. I was actually expecting smaller brook trout to play with. That's why I started with the spinning rod. Switched over to the fly, and on the, about the third cast, hooked up a nice little rainbow. Wow. We're up here, little rivers, uh, North Michigan, the river that runs right out of the, um, the lake. There's beaver ponds and meadows here. And all I'm doing is, uh, you don't have to be much of a fly fisherman. I'm not casting more than a rod length away. Just like that. And he just came up and grabbed it and bang. There's, you find these little feeding pools. And you just lay the fly right in them and drift it through. You don't get much of a drift, but um, it's all it takes. And bang. Now because these rivers are so small, you get a nice sized fish like that out of them, probably need to rest this pool. We'll make a few more casts and then I think we'll move on to another pool. Just amazing where these fish will hide. 
This is the spot that most people would walk by because it just looks so small unless you're experienced. Got one. Oh, missed him. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm fishing back up the river. I fished this little hole. I said I needed to move on and rest it. There's a hole. I'm actually, the river's running away. It's the wrong way. And it was another nice rainbow under the branches here. Hard place to cast to. I'm going to see if I can get another one to hit. But all I did was just, I got to kind of cast sideways to lay that fly in there. And I get about a two foot drift. And, uh, Second cast, the third cast in there, another one. You don't have to be an expert fly fisherman. And the fly I'm using is a little attractor fly. It's not really an imitation of anything because there's no hatch going on here right now. In fact, a great, it's kind of big, almost like a bug. Um, a great fly to use right now would probably be a grasshopper. But just shows you, here I am in this little stretch of river. I've had two nice fish hitting within about a 10 minute period. You know, I cast, trying to cast up under that log. There's a real undercut there. Finally hooked up on a branch, had to go in and get my fly. So probably spooked anything in that pool now. Probably spooked it when I hooked up that first fish and lost it. But these are the kind of things. Now we're going to walk this river and fish it as we walk in. And these pools will be rested by the time we come out in an hour, a couple hours. And uh, they'll fish will be in those exact same spots again. So what we'll be able to do is come back and we'll know these spots. We can creep up on them, make a couple casts, and probably pull another fish right out of those same spots. Well, we're going to move the camera and get set up, and I'm going to move down river a little bit. <laughs> Didn't even know I had this one on. Not as big as the other ones. I was kind of casting my fly as I went. Little brook trout, but boy, they're pretty. <laughs> Not quite in his fall colors yet. We're here in the, oh, get him back in the water. We're here in the uh, end of August. So the brook trout are just starting to get their fall colors at this altitude. But once again, I was not even a rod length cast, drifting this little fly through this little run and uh, that little brook trout came up from behind a rock and ate and it. Another thing I should mention to you is that I walk, I'm walking around and fishing back up stretches of the river, kind of scouting them because where the trail where I parked, the river is flowing that way. So what I'm doing is walking past and fishing back up away from the river because this is so small a water that these fish will spook really easy and they tend to orient facing into the current because that's how they feed. So they're facing upstream. So if I was to come downstream, I might catch some fish in the pockets and things, but I wouldn't get as many, as many bites because I, uh, I'd spook the fish before I'd get close enough to make a cast in this narrow, shallow water. So you want to walk upriver and make your... Now, I'll, occasionally there'll be a pool and I'll fish it down away, and I've actually caught some fish doing that, but um, you've got to be very stealthy when you do that. There we go. There we go. Oh, nice brookie, I think. Oh, 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 look at him jump. Boy, they're fun. I got a uh, 6X tippet on one and a 5X on the other. I don't know which fly he took yet. Oh, it's another rainbow. Another rainbow and he took the little grasshopper. So much fun watching them suck these off the surface. I got two flies on here now. You probably can't see this very good. The camera is a ways away. I'll show you the setup in just a little while. Get him in the water. He's about 10 inch rainbow. 
Oh, there he goes. Swam away already. I, I switched to uh, two flies. I've got a grasshopper almost acting like a strike indicator and a little nymph drifting below it. Drifted through this one hole and it went under. I think he hit the nymph. Cast again and the, he hit the grasshopper. So that was really fun. I tell you what, if you're a beginning fly fisherman and you want to catch fish on a dry fly, just get up here in the fall to Michigan River. Probably good all summer, to tell you the truth. But fall when the grasshoppers and uh, the insects are falling in the water a little bit, it's a little easier. And uh, whatever level of fly fisherman you are, you'll get to see these little rainbows and brook trout and maybe a nice brown. Take these flies on the surface. I have a little grasshopper fly and a little copper john nymph below it. I was using a little attractor fly before and I thought I'd try the grasshopper, well mainly because I broke the other one off. But I tell you what, it's just real easy fishing. As you can see, my cast is just lift and boom. Sometimes I'll make a false cast just to dry the grasshopper out. But usually I don't even have to do that. And then you'll see me move from one side of the river to the other as I cast, because there'll be a deep hole here and a deep hole there. And that's pretty much all I do. Let the current drift that little grasshopper along. A lot of times, as soon as it hits, they'll hit it. That's another thing about fishing a grasshopper type lure, is you don't need to have a gentle lay down of the fly because you're trying to imitate a grasshopper that blew into the water. And so it doesn't have to uh, settle down real gently. And even a little, even not the best drift you can get away with because a grasshopper oftentimes will be struggling on the water. When you get to a stretch like this, you gotta fish the whole river because there could be a rock anywhere with a fish laying behind it. Now, they're gonna to tend to use the sides of the river where there's cover. So you wanna fish close, real close to the shore. But if there's a little deeper hole and there's a rock, some of the bigger fish will use that too. You know, another thing you'll notice, I'm wearing my waders today. And obviously we could fish this from the shore. So if you don't have waders, don't hesitate to come up here and not fish without them. The reason I like wearing my waders for this though is because there isn't much casting room on fly fishing. So getting back on the shore, it would be difficult to cast. So I have to make sure that I, by having wading the stream, I have my back cast can go in the stream behind me. I just broke off my small fly. So I'm gonna tie that up and we'll be back with some more uh, small stream fishing at North Michigan Reservoir. <laughs> little, I think it's a little brook trout in this beaver pond. When I first stepped into this pond, I kind of spooked them, but I think they're getting active again now. Yeah. Oh, pretty little brookie. That's what we're after, right there. Now this is a small fish. I'm gonna get the hook out of them. Little brookie about six, eight inches long. Beautiful color, starting to get their fall spawn colors. Not very big. Probably can't see it very good from how far away you are. I'll get this one back in the water, but just, just fun back here. You know, we were fishing on the other side of the lake and a rainstorm came. And so we decided to, uh, Well, we had to get in the car. We couldn't keep filming. So we, we were going to almost call it quits. It rained so hard. And then what we did was we said we drove around and found these, found these beaver ponds while it was raining on the other end of the lake. And so we decided instead of going way down the river, they're pretty close to the road, we'd come and do a little fishing here. And been out here for just a few minutes and uh, got both the spinning rod and the fly rod. Got the spinning rod up on shore here. I may try that in this beaver pond too, but I'm casting that grasshopper fly again. And when I first got into the pond, there had been some activity and it quit, but now they must be settled down again and they're starting to hit. So hopefully we can get a bunch of them, maybe even get a few bigger ones. There we go. Another one. <laughs> this one's a little rainbow. I thought it was a little brook trout. about six inches long and this little pool is full of them. I'm gonna see if I can get a bigger one out of here. 
just fun, you know, like a little kid up here playing. Got my ultralight rod with four pound test, a 30 second or maybe it's even a 64th ounce jig and a little tiny Berkeley Power maggot and just uh, have a good time. This little pool I'm fishing out of can't, can't be more than 15 feet by 15 feet. There's another one, active little fish, full of little tiny, little tiny, this one's another little rainbow. We'll get these back in the water right away. Hopefully we'll get a bigger one out of here, but I'm having fun. You know, it's kind of like when you're a kid and the bluegills are biting. Well, we're out on that kind of a day, just having a good time and a little, just catching fish today, having fun. All this do is drop this little jig right down here. I can't hardly put it down here without catching a fish. Another one. <laughs> you know, they're all about six, six inches long. This one ate my bait. Another rainbow. I haven't caught a brook trout. I thought I'd be catching all kinds of brook trout in here, but I'm catching all these little rainbows. That's okay though, because you know, these rainbows can get pretty big. So you never know when mom's gonna be there. They keep eating my bait though, so I gotta keep rebaiting. You know, I get to travel all over the world and fish the best places with the best fishermen in the world. And sometimes you just run up to a little place like this and you're playing in this beaver pond and catching a couple fish and just having a good time is as much fun as anything. You get away from the world, catch a few fish, relax. We've caught fish on a fly today. We've caught them on spinning gear. It's just really fun. Try another little spot in the pool and see if I can get a bigger fish to hit maybe. There's gotta be, I don't know how many hundreds of fish maybe in this little pool. You can't put it down without getting a bite. Oh, well, lost that one, he took my bait. I think I'm gonna try another type of bait. They're ripping this one off. Lost them. That was the biggest one yet and I lost them. Another one. Another one. Uh oh, lost it and lost another one in the dam. I'll tell you what, enough of this. I think we'll move on and try to do something else, but it just shows you all the little fun things you can do when you're out here. Really fishing simple today. On my fly rod, I've used a grasshopper or a little attractor all day long. And on my spinning rod, a little grub, and that's all I fished with. Probably could catch more fish if we got a little more technical, but you know, fishing is now is about that. Sometimes it's just about being outdoors, enjoying what's around you, having a little fun, catching a few fish and just really keeping it simple. Another little one on the spinner. <laughs> I'll tell you what, fishing these beaver ponds, sometimes you can have just the shallowest water, then you get by these dams and there's little ponds and just another little one, but fun. This one's actually bigger than some of the others. Took it good. Another little rainbow. Get him back in the water. I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it just bodes well for these streams that there's so many of these small rainbows in here because what went on with whirling disease and all of those things, to be able to catch, that means there's gonna be big rainbows. And I'm sure there's some big rainbows and browns in these now. 
I got another one. Oh, this is a little better one. <laughs> right off this one little spot. Wow. Another rainbow on a spinning rod. All right. That's a little better fish. Still not a giant, obviously, but still a nice, nice fish. Another rainbow. It's getting you towards know, the end of the day. This might be my last cast, although I always seem to make one more. Uh, we caught fish today on uh, fly rods on the surface, uh, just a little grasshopper fly, nothing technical. We didn't catch any big fish today, but then we didn't really, really try to be extremely stealthy. And we didn't, ooh, there are fish surface, I'm gonna cast it, I'm telling you. And we didn't try to, uh, try to do anything real difficult. So we probably spooked the big fish, but we caught rainbows and brook trout, caught them on spinning gear, caught them on fly gear, and just, just had a great time. And uh, it's getting dark and the camera got one there, <laughs> hooked up with one. One last fish before we go. Oh, here we go, another one. And this is pretty typical of what we caught today. And I can finally get one close because we've had the cameras far away a lot today. And this is the kind of fish we've been catching all day. Get the hook out of it. We'll get the hook out and let it get going. Tell you what, I'm going to get the pliers out, unhook this fish. Do yourself a favor, come up to North Michigan Reservoir. Just enjoy the fishing, enjoy the outdoors, the wildlife. Have a good time and join us next week.